The Never Ending Story Once upon a time, the Reverend Marcus Leek visited an old bookshop in the High Street. After slowly perusing the dusty wooden shelves in the fixturing section, he selected and purchased a book of strange short stories. He took the small book back to his house in Glen Close, poured himself a hot coffee and carried it along with some custard cream biscuits on a tray and settled it on a small table beside his large, well-worn but very comfortable armchair. The Reverend loved reading short stories. His favourite was about a goldfish that couldn't swim. You may have read it. He sat down and began to read his new book. Page after page, story after story. The Reverend absorbed every word and became more engrossed with every line, slurping coffee and spilling biscuit crumbs over his green jumper as he did so. Nearly two hours had passed and the Reverend began reading the final story in the collection. It was a strange story about a Reverend who, like himself, had purchased a book of short stories and Reverend Leek was fascinated to see how the story developed, what happened next and most importantly how it would end. But suddenly and quite unexpectedly there was a problem. Just as he thought he was nearing the end of the story he turned the page to find it completely blank. Oh no, he thought, how very strange. Even for a strange story, this was very strange. Surely there had been some mistake. How was he ever going to know how the story ended? He rose from his chair, quickly put on his coat, and, clutching the small book firmly in his hand, left his house and hurried back to the old bookshop. Excuse me, he called to the old, grey-haired, brown-suited bookshop owner. Yes, can I help you? he asked croakily, carefully inserting a bookmark into his own book on fly fishing and closing it. About this book of short stories? Yes, sir. What about it? One of the stories is a bit short. Well, sir, it is a book of short stories. That often happens in such books. The clue's in the title. No, no, you don't understand. I was reading a story from it, and when I went to go to the next page, the story just disappeared. It stopped, suddenly, for no apparent reason. Really? said the old bookshop owner, leaning heavily on his walking stick. How very odd. Yes. I was wondering if the page had been torn out or fallen out. Maybe it's still in your bookshop somewhere. Or maybe it's been picked up by someone and put into another book by mistake. That's very unlikely, said the bookshop owner. I'm sure if it had come out of the book, someone would have noticed it, picked it up and handed it to me first, rather than shove it into any old book. Oh, sighed the Reverend. But please, said the bookshop owner, gesturing with an over-elaborate sweep of his right arm, feel free to have a good look around for yourself. Reverend Leek did indeed have a good look around. He picked up, opened, tipped up and shook every book of fiction, hoping that the page from the short story would fall out onto the floor. But it didn't. He examined every shelf extremely carefully, from the front, from the back, from the side, all along and from above and underneath. And he found nothing. Eventually, he went back to the counter where the bookshop owner stood. No luck, Reverend Leek sighed with disappointment. Well, said the bookshop owner, perhaps I could order another copy for you. Oh, yes, please, said the immediately delighted Reverend. He showed the bookshop owner the title of the book and its ISBN barcode number on its back cover and watched excitedly as the grey-haired old man thumbed through his long list of book suppliers and made his first phone call. After a short while, No luck there, I'm afraid, he said. Reverend Leek's face drooped with sadness. The bookshop owner continued to phone incessantly nearly all of the book suppliers on his list, but none seemed to have the book in stock for delivery. The Reverend Leek and the bookshop owner soon became increasingly dejected. This is the last supplier on the list, said the 
the bookshop owner, calling from his old-fashioned black dial phone. Let's hope he has it for you. He crossed his fingers. He named the book he wanted and its ISBN barcode number, and a few anxious moments elapsed whilst he waited for the supplier to check on his computer for his available book stock. You do? Oh, that's wonderful, said the delighted bookshop owner. Can you send it to me? Reverend Lee breathed a huge sigh of relief. My name? Oh yes, the bookshop owner smiled broadly. It's J. R. Hartley. The bookshop owner put down the phone receiver. It will be here by the end of the week, he said. Reverend Leake smiled and thanked the bookshop owner and momentarily wondered where he may have seen him before. He left the bookshop, jumped childishly in the air and clicked his heels in, del in delight. He returned at the end of the week and sure enough there to greet him was the bookshop owner with another copy of the book of strange short stories. The Reverend paid him gratefully and returned home clutching his book tightly. Carrying another tray of hot coffee and custard creams, he rested them on his small table, settled into his large, well-worn but very comfortable armchair and began to read the final story of the collection once more. When he got to the part of the story where he was before, he turned a page in eager anticipation. Once again, suddenly and quite unexpectedly, the story just stopped for no apparent reason. <laughs>